If you're thinking about getting a limb length any done, one of the first few questions that's gonna pop into your head is, when can I walk normally again so that no one will notice? And the short answer is, when your bones are fully healed and your muscles regain enough strength and flexibility through their full active range of motion. That way, you can monitor your progress right after surgery when you're using the wheelchair and walker to assist the weight bearing with crutches, to walking cautiously as you start to build up your muscle strength, stability, and endurance, all the way to a normal, powerful walking gait where everything is the same as it was pre-surgery. What's up guys, it's Victor from Cyborg for Life, and today we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into each of the mobility phases after limb lengthening surgery. And to keep things simple, we're gonna break it down by device, the amount of max recommended length for each bone segment, and the lengthening and consolidation phase. Everything's gonna be based on the testimony from actual stature lengthening patients who otherwise had a straightforward lengthening process without any impeding complications that would have thrown off the timeline. So I put together a little chart that's gonna help visualize all of this, and I even made a downloadable PDF version if you want a copy of that below the video, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get right into this. All right, guys, so here is the table that I put together. So here at the top, I have all of the different devices that are going to do the lengthening. And then here on this left side, we have the phases, okay? So at the top, we have the non-weight-bearing internal lengthening nail, like the Precise 2 or the Fit Bone. Then we have the full weight-bearing internal lengthening nail, like the Stride, the G-Nail, or the Betts Bone. Column number three has the external fixator internal nail combo, like the lengthening over nail or the lengthening and then nailing. And the last column has the external fixator only, for the tibias usually, which is like the external ring fixator, such as the Taylor spatial frame, okay? Now for the phases, we have the distraction phase, and we're assuming that you're, you know, these patients would be lengthening their femurs eight centimeters or their tibias five centimeters, which is that max recommended length that I was talking about, okay? And we're assuming that it takes 12 weeks. If this was a textbook case, there was no, you know, impeding complications as mentioned. Now in the consolidation phase, we assume that takes 12 weeks as well. All right, so let's get to it. So for a precise two patient, we'll just take them as an example, during the distraction phase, the status is going to be non-weight bearing, meaning you are not going to put any uh, weight or excessive weight on those legs, okay? And I think Nuvasiv just, you know, released a new statement saying that they do not want more than 50 pounds on even the largest precise two nail. Um, so that means that you can have a total of 100 pounds on the legs at a time. And again, you should probably stay even further away from that so you don't chance things happening. But that means that you're going to be using a walker and a wheelchair during this phase, guys. You're not going to be doing much moving around, and you're going to, you're going to be uh, pretty much bedridden, okay? Now, for the stride, the G-nail, or the Betts bone, well, actually, the stride's kind of out. It's not on the market right now, but the status is going to change to weight-bearing as tolerable, meaning that you can weight-bear as much as you can handle because these devices can handle several hundred pounds of force. However, when you walk, you do distribute more force per leg, so you do need to be very careful and uh, use walking assistance is recommended. So walker or crutches, the surgeons are going to usually say, have those nearby, okay? Unless you're like in the living room, you're going to stand up to get a glass of water. If you're going out, out and about, use crutches, use a walker, um, and you need to be very, very careful, okay? Now, the lengthening over nail, lengthening and the nailing, uh, it's weight bearing is tolerable because these external fixators are going, are going to do a lot of the weight bearing for you. They can, again, handle several hundreds of pounds. Um, walker crutches recommended. And the same thing goes for the external ring fixator or like the tail spatial frame for the tibias, all right? Now, things get interesting when we move into the consolidation phase, all right? So for the precise two nail, if you see from the point that you stop lengthening at week zero to about eight weeks in, you can weight bear a percentage of your body weight with the walker. So this depends on the bone regenerate that's forming in the gap that you lengthen, and it's dependent on what your surgeon says you can do. So if your surgeon sees a certain amount of bone cortices and bone regenerate forming, and they say, hey, uh, Victor, you can weight bear 25% of your body weight, um, then I know if I weigh 200 pounds, that means I can weight bear, um, what's that, a quarter, 50 pounds of my weight, and the rest of it has to be distributed off on the walker, okay? Now, as that time goes on, as you get closer to the eight weeks, that might be four weeks in, you might be able to do 50%. And then as you go closer to the 8% at the eight weeks, you might be able to do 75 or even closer to that, you know, 100%, which is where um, the eight to 12 week mark comes in, where you're full weight bearing with crutches or walker, okay? Then as you move further into the consolidation phase, such as three to four months in, 12 to 16 weeks in, you will hopefully be full weight bearing with no assistance, meaning you can get rid of the walker, get rid of the crutches, and now walk 
without any assistance. Again, gingerly, very cautiously, not walking super fast or running or jumping or, you know, skipping stairs, none of that nonsense, but you are able to get rid of the walking devices, okay? Now, as we move along to the full weight bearing internal lengthening nails, like the G-nail, Bet's Bone, um, in the consolidation phase, weeks zero through eight, you are gonna notice that you're able to full weight bear with crutches, um, and you, again, you, those are, that's a recommendation. That's a strong recommendation because patients like to get very antsy and do things that are you know, not recommended and walk really fast and do all that crazy stuff. So surgeons are gonna recommend that you use crutches for the first two months into consolidation. After that, usually you can get rid of the, uh, the devices. It's full weight bearing with no assistance, which is different than the precise nail over here because you need to use crutches still. Okay, then it, the same thing is as you get deeper in, okay, into the 12 to 16 weeks. And the same thing goes for the lengthening over nail and the external ring fixator, okay? Crutches are recommended, you know, in the first little bit of consolidation. As your bones start to consolidate a little bit more, you're full weight bearing with no assistance. And that is all, that's all thanks to the device being stronger and being able to, you know, handle a larger percentage of your weight, all right? Now, when can you get your normal walk back? That's what everybody wants to know, right? Well, for the precise, precise two patient, or the fifth bone, I have spoken to a, a numerous amount of people who have had the precise two, and they say that right around that eight month mark is when they notice that they start to walk very normally without any limp or waddle to their walk, and patient, you know, nobody really notices it, and they don't notice it. Um, they may notice that they get tired and need to sit down a little bit after being on their feet all day or walking long distances, and that's normal. However, there was one patient uh, that it took up to a year after the surgery. Uh, I think they did like seven and a half centimeters on the femurs and they you know, took up to a year after the surgery to regain their normal walk. And now they said they just felt tight you know, in that popliteal angle, which is like your, your knee extension. It, it was just very, very tight. Hamstrings were really tight and that prevented a, uh, a normal walk, okay? Like I said, you have to get full flexibility through your active range of motion, meaning you can do it yourself. If you need somebody to stretch you, it does not count because that's not, you're not gonna have somebody holding your legs straight while you're walking around town, okay? So seven to nine months for the uh, non-weight bearing internal lengthening nails. For the full weight bearing internal lengthening nails, usually that's two months faster on, uh, you know, within the range. So that you're gonna see with a five to seven months that patient's gonna get a full walk back. Why is that? Because in the distraction phase, they were able to walk. So they kept a lot of the stabilizers and the main muscles really limber and loose the whole time, right? They didn't have to rebuild all that strength and flexibility back because it was already there. So it saved that time that they had so they were able to get a normal walk a lot sooner, okay? Now, for the external, for the lengthening over nail, or, uh, lengthening over nail, it goes back up. Why is that? That's usually because the pins go through the soft tissue, the muscles, the fascia, and that will become, you know, hard, uh, build up scar tissue and adhesions and that, that rigidity can cause a lot of the stiffness in the muscles and have a little bit of a, a waddle or a, a weird walk, a limp in your walk. So it takes more time to iron out those kinks and that's why I bumped this time up and that's what most of those patients who get lengthening over the nail on the femurs that I have talked to, it takes about eight months um, as well. Okay. Now the external ring fixator on the tibias, I only had one patient that I talked to about that. And I think it was about six and a half or seven months. Um, I just pushed it to eight because again, tibias heal slower and you always want to give some time for that. Okay. Oh, and one other thing that I wanted to add is that if you're a discrepancy patient, uh, the mobility during the lengthening phase doesn't really apply to you because you should have one good leg to crutch around on. Um, however, regaining your normal walk could take just as long as the stature patients because it depends on the bone healing and you know regaining the muscle strength and the flexibility through your full active range of motion. Okay, um, but. Yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I have for you today. Um, if you found the video helpful and you learned a little bit about how long it's going to take to get your normal walk back after limiting surgery, go ahead and hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe. Until next time, this is Victor from Cyborg Life, signing out. Peace.